I'll be the first to admit that I have ophidiophobia, arachnophobia, and even entomophobia, but then again, who doesn't? However, luckily for us, they're all ectotherms, so in the winter, they simply can't sustain their body heat, die out, and go extinct, right? Well, as you can probably guess, ectotherms like spiders, insects, and snakes don't simply die out. Instead, they employ a wide array of techniques to survive the seemingly fatal temperatures of winter. But how? How exactly do ectotherms survive the winter? Well, not surprisingly, most invertebrates will actually bury themselves underground to escape the cold temperatures of the atmosphere. These organisms such as worms, ants, and termites dig themselves below the frost line where the water in the soil ceases to freeze, leaving the soil under moist, above freezing, and suitable for life. Others, like the monarch butterfly, migrate over 4,000 miles a year by the millions to warmer climates. In fact, the migration is so massive that in areas like the monarch butterfly biosphere reserve in Mexico, an estimated 60 million to 1 billion butterflies cover the trees and forest in a dense blanket of colorful wings each year. But for those invertebrates who aren't as fortunate as to literally fly away from their troubles, they have to incorporate more unique methods to prevent extinction. For instance, possibly the most dreaded insect in the world, mosquito, fortunately does die off, leaving us a summer bite free, with the exception of those living in your warm and snug house. Sadly, there's much more to the story than just widespread mosquito death. Before mosquitoes face their imminent and cold death, they lay their burly, cold hardy eggs in the moist soil, full of water in containers such as gutters and trash cans. These eggs then await the longer and hotter days of spring to hatch and torment us once again. Still not impressed? Well, how about the fact that certain organisms like the ladybug and snake will hibernate communally in areas known as hibernaculums in order to preserve body heat? Surprisingly, ectotherms like narcissus snakes and toads and lizards will even live together mutually under a temporary truce. But what about us vertebrates? I mean, not us specifically, but us. Interestingly enough, apart from the salamanders, toads, and snakes that bury themselves underground or high in the crevices to endure the freezing temperatures, some vertebrates have very novel ways of surviving the winter. For instance, organisms like the wood frogs or the green tree frogs completely freeze over in the winter. These amphibians produce a group of chemicals known as cryoprotectants. These basically act as biological antifreeze, preventing the formation of ice crystals in the cells and thereby protecting organs and tissues from freeze damage. This allows for the frogs to freeze over in the winter and thaw out in the spring almost completely unharmed. But what about those vertebrates who can't survive becoming a living ice pop? How about swimming with the fishes? Literally. Some ectothermic fish simply rough out the winter and unlike the fish in this picture, remain active in the unfrozen portion of a body of water where the temperature remains constant at a slightly above freezing. In fact, this environment is so appealing that even animals that aren't fish choose to stay submerged throughout the season. Case in point, turtles which don't have a pair of working gills. Instead, they use their cloacas, a posterior opening to the digestive, urinary, and reproductive tracts to absorb oxygen. Unlike the cloacas of other animals, those of turtles have a pair of air sacs called bursi that are pressed against the channel. Not only are these bursi capable of holding air, but they are also highly vascularized, facilitating diffusion of oxygen from the cloaca and, put simply, allows turtles to breathe through their ears. Impressively, even without the bursi, turtles are capable of surviving up to 33 minutes without oxygen long after humans and other animals would have suffocated. I think it's fair to say that ectotherms are exceptional survivors. Plus, they don't need three whole cruxes to do so. Tell us what you want to see next in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter for more science facts and updates. Yeah.